Hello lovelies, I'm Angela and this is Parisian Farm Girl. Bienvenue, bonne année, welcome to my channel, I'm back. To those of you who were counting on a Christmas tour, I'm very sorry. My husband had surgery and as a family, we just had to call it and pulling the plug on our YouTube schedule a few weeks early was one of the ways that we stayed sane and healthy during the holidays. I hope that your time together with your family was beautiful and blessed. I'm very excited about today's video. A lot of talking in today's video. If you've followed the channel for a while, you know that in December we celebrated our fourth year <laughs> here in Door County. Can you hear that? That is the wind. There is a blizzard outside and it is making the back door vibrate, which is ironic because today I'm going to share with you all of the things that are wrong with this house. Please do not leave me nasty comments. You know how much I love this house. If you remember this reaction here when we first moved in, then you know how special this home is to us. We are in the fourth year of what we thought would be a five year project. And so today, I just wanna take you around and share with you in sort of a lighthearted way, all of the things that are really wrong with this house. I'm gonna show you all the ways that I take the camera and kind of go up and over so you don't see all the nasty bits. Of course, I would love for you to subscribe to the Old World Design Society. You can wait till the end of this video and a little white circle is going to pop up where you can do that. This is the Winter 2022 magazine. In our society, we have a private design forum with amateurs and professionals and we all hang out there. There are three classes each quarter taught by me. We do antique swaps and once a week I answer society members design questions over on Instagram. So be sure that you are a society member. Wait till the end of this video for that white circle and wait till the end of this video because I have a huge announcement to make. Something that I know many of you are going to be very excited about. So uh, I think this is the part where we play the introduction song and then I'm going to take you around Sur le Rocher and show you all the nasty bits, everything that's wrong with this house. Enchanté. So if we are going to talk about what is wrong with the house, let's start with the oven. I have had a broken oven for a decade. So before we moved here, we were on our rental farm. Many of you know that story. And my oven was broken. The glass was cracked. It wouldn't heat right. There were two broken burners. And then I thought we were living large. I ordered this. Now I ordered this. This is a Cosmo. Do not buy one. Okay, this is not an endorsement. Um, I ordered this because it looked like a Viking. It was a Viking knockoff. It is what I could afford at the time. I was really particular. I didn't want a backsplash. I wanted something on legs. I had this idea for this French style hearth. Uh, the idea is, you know, for it to look like in Europe where they have the old hearth and then they put in the range or they put in the little wood burner. Um, this is a total piece of garbage. So over in the corner, I have a tiny convection oven that serves the family. It does a great job. We use the stovetop burners and I have finally ordered my dream oven, which I will pass on to one of my children someday. So I'm very excited about that. That change in the house will come later this year. It was a really big deal after dealing with a busted oven for a decade. Uh, and six children. So these are my colors that I have been choosing between. Ooh. <laughs> and um, I think here, I've got some here that were really uh, not contenders. The big contenders were um, these two. Uh, let's see, I don't remember. Delft and Armor, I think. And I'm going with the Delft. It's absolutely beautiful. My mic is gonna pick up these loud noises. The oven, hopefully, will be here later this year. It's gonna take a long time. Um, in the meantime, I try to keep this clean. We do use the top burners. I freshen it up with, you know, new towels every quarter. I'm thankful we have this. I'm thankful we can cook our food. But I will be so glad when this chapter of my life closes over broken ovens. So very relieved. I'll show you the little cutie in the corner. 
Another thing that was really, really hurting in the kitchen were the kitchen cabinets. They're still hurting. We still have the birch logs set up, holding up the copper sink, holding up areas where we deconstructed the cabinets. But over the holidays, I painted them the most beautiful shade of navy blue. Cal Supreze navy blue is my favorite color. And so it's made an improvement to the kitchen, but over the course of this year, we will be going to the flea markets and shopping for some more butcher block, other things that we can use to create that unfitted kitchen look. Because really, the birch logs were charming for a while and they served their purpose. Now they have to go. So let's head to another corner of the house and I will show you something that is wrong with it. Actually, before we leave the kitchen, let's talk about this window just for a second because it clearly, as you can see, causes a lot of problems when we film for YouTube. And I confess I'm lazy. I despise lugging out all of the lights to make the lighting really appropriate. This blows everything out. So usually one side of my face is shadowed and one side of the screen is really overexposed. So we're just gonna have to continue to deal with that because I actually would love to make this window bigger. It's a very small window. And despite how bright this kitchen looks on film, that's just the, the blowout from, from the light and the darkness, the contrast. In real life, it's actually a really dark kitchen. And I would love to scour Craigslist for a bigger, bigger window and put something in here that's, you know, 12 inches to 18 inches bigger so I can see into the courtyard and into the garden. I think that would be really beautiful, even though it will cause even more problems when we film. I think it'd be a great addition to the kitchen. All right, I'm standing on a sofa. Don't tell my kids. Here's a problem. We've put up trim because we did take down most of that rough hewn cedar, that really nasty stuff that your hair would stick to every time you walked by. In fact, that's what, that's what this entire room was covered in if you look back on really old videos, but um, we had to put the Christmas tree up. And so this job never got done. The Christmas tree goes right here. So we need to finish tacking these down, caulk them, paint them. So everything all around this room is a little wonky and a little wobbly. And I can't wait to get that done because then it will look nice and finished. Now we're gonna go in here and I'm going to show you a window covered in plastic. All right, now we are in the blue room and you can watch us creating this beautiful space somewhere up in here. Click the link, I'll show it to you. We've got plastic covering this window. Now remember, this is an envelope house, so in between this plastic, uh, let's see, can I show you, is about 18 inches till the exterior of the house. You can see it's moving because air circulates around this house. If I remove the plastic, I can look straight down to the basement. Very weird, um, if we seal this space up, it does not affect the integrity of the envelope. So we're going to make this window look like the stone window in the kitchen, which will really add to this whole kind of English cottage look we have in this room with the painted beams and all the mix matched furniture and a big Persian rug. However, I cannot find the stone. No one in the Midwest carries this stone veneer anymore, so I have my work cut out for me. If you find me some, it's Coronado stone, and the stone style is called Bordeaux. That's what you see behind my oven, and that's what you see in the kitchen window. And I want to repeat that here desperately because <laughs> this is sort of ruining my vibe. And it's another window that gives us a lot of trouble when we film for YouTube. So I'd love to get some beautiful curtains that I can pull. But in the meantime, that stone look is gonna be great. I'm going to put some sconces on either side, make it nice and cozy over the sofa here. Another problem we have in the house, some changes that are going to take place this year. We've got these louver doors all over the place. You've been watching long enough, you've seen some of them come down. There's still one here in the hallway that I always try to avoid. I do have a little French door set aside that I'm going to use the mirror spray paint on, so that should be a quick fix. And then when you go up the hallway, we still have the two by four railing that we installed for moving day. It's so horrible. So that is definitely on its way out this year. And then right where that louver door is, 
is the most adorable chandelier with little leopard lampshades. But as you can see, the electric work has never been finished. So we've got some nice little plastic caps there and it's such an eyesore. It has been that way for four years. We popped that light in right when we moved in. So that's gotta go. And then in the greenhouse, we have a few problems. We ran out of trim and with supply chain issues, we haven't gotten any more. So we have to finish trimming out the beautiful green doors and come up with some sort of a solution for this entrance to the basement because it's just carved out of the floor and you can see into the basement. That's where we store things. We've got the sauna down there and it's not very aesthetically pleasing. So we need some sort of an iron railing, maybe a door at the bottom of the stairs, but something to sort of delineate the two spaces. So now we are in the kids' bathroom. So when it's all said and done, this is amazing to me. We will have three bathrooms. The downstairs bathroom has its own problems. I'll try to show you that floor, which is its biggest problem. This bathroom has a myriad of problems. You saw the hideous vanity, marble with a scallop like seashell sink thing. I found this dresser uh, last year, so I grabbed it because it was super cheap, like 60 bucks, and it's green, huh, which I love. So when I was in New Orleans, they had a blue dresser with a drop-in sink. So let's see if I can grab this to show you. I found this on Amazon for $98. And I've always wanted, ah, I've always wanted um, a very Victorian tile look in a bathroom. So I found this online. This will be the floor. It does have really great plank floors, but there's you know, good quarter inch gaps in the middle and with children, it just gets filled with lint and what have you. So I want something nice and clean. So this will be the floor. Um, this dresser is going to get polyed and it needs a little repair. So a lot of people ask me, how do you keep doing all these projects? My uh, advice is like, just know like nothing gets done in a timely fashion around here. We always have so much going on. The thing to do is just do what you can when you can. So I've got some wood glue under this corner and I've got a clamp. This is what I can do today. I'm just going to clamp this down so it can start to glue and get ready for the sink. I wanna show you something really bad that you've never seen. I don't even think you've ever seen this bathroom. Check this out. This is the shower liner to this bathroom. It's falling apart. We had it screwed to the wall but it's coming down. Eventually, this is all getting yanked out this year. I have a claw foot tub. You know I've got bathtubs and in inventory in my garage. It's going to go here. The bottom will be painted green. There'll be beautiful brass, brass fixtures. And uh, in theory, the whole idea is that it's beautiful. This green dresser with the sink goes where you are over there. And this bathroom comes together for the children. Okay, this is something else I've never shown you before. You never see the top half of my bedroom, and that's because it's still not painted. This is uh, the children's suite up here, and we've got curtains and privacy and all that jazz. Uh, but I never show this wall because it's still not done. Obviously, it's going to be a pain to do. We have to drag up plywood and create sort of a scaffolding so it can get done. But I think what I'd like to do this year is do this entire wall in bookcases. I know that's gonna be quite a stretch with uh, the supply chain and lumber and all that. And I will hold out as long as I have to for that idea because I think it will be brilliant. The room is very challenging to me because it's very long and narrow and architecturally it's just much bigger than I want it to be. So I think this would create some drama and some intimacy at the same time. I love books and I can fill this whole space with art and books and I think it will be fantastic. I know that's very, very far down on the wish list, um, but here's hoping.
Okay, so this is another part of the house that you've really never seen and it's simply because I just try to avoid it at all costs. Uh, this is deck railing. What possessed somebody building their dream home in 1984 to use deck railing uh, is beyond me. It was actually worse than this. Amelie took out every other spindle, bless her heart, but it's still green treated ick. Um, I don't really have a solution for this right now. I know what I want to do, but logistically, it's gonna take a little manipulation. I'd like to build a knee wall here, um, but then we're using two by fours and we're making the width of the hallway even smaller. So for now, um, I've been very inspired by this photograph that I'm going to show you on Instagram. I would like to fill this upper level with Swedish ivy because that's really speaking to me right now and maybe just install one bookshelf rack along the bottom and fill that with books because there are bookcases behind you in the built-ins and I do want this to feel like this sort of library, living room, fireplace room loaded with books. And I'm just so into plants the last couple years. So I think the Swedish ivy spilling everywhere creates some drama and helps me work with this really wonky space. I know there are better solutions. They're up there whirling around in my head, but this is actually a part of the house where I need something quick. I need it now because four years of deck railing is, uh, needs to come to a close. Okay, so there's gonna be some racket upstairs because Joel's working in the soon-to-be master bathroom, but this is another eyesore, uh, a part of my boot room. If you listen to the podcast, uh, you should definitely listen to the podcast. It's called Homemaker Chic. It airs on Mondays and Thursdays, but if you are a regular listener to the podcast, you know I'm always complaining about this space because with six children, like right now behind the camera is just piles of snow gear and wetness and chaos and the dryer is over there and the washer is over here and look at this we've got like exposed wall back here um this is just crazy so i have excellent news to share with you i'm so excited the washer and dryer are from uh, facebook marketplace i think the dryer was like 120 bucks i don't know the washer surely was comparable i have a brand new washer and dryer coming tomorrow I don't think I've had new appliances since I first got married. That was a long time ago. I won't tell you how long. I'm so excited. Guess what color they are? Okay, so this area, a few years ago, you watched that episode where we hauled the farm sink that we found in the woods. We hauled it up to the property. It's been in the garage this whole time. This is where that farm sink is going to go. This electric box needs to get moved to the other side of the kitchen because the farm sink has a big cast iron backsplash. The laundry room, the laundry rather, will be <laughs> in my master bedroom bath upstairs and this will be a functioning space. <laughs> Where I can wash dirty eggs and dirty vegetables and the kids will build some lockers. They can have all their gear stored away. This is just another eyesore that I know you've really never seen because I'm always trying to avoid it. I go to great lengths to avoid this area with the camera, but there is hope. I'm so excited. I hope you enjoyed that quick tour of everything that is wrong with the house. Everyone needs a fresh start. It is January. I am raring to go. Speaking of fresh starts and makeovers, I think you should visit ParisianFarmGirl.com. My blog has had a dramatic makeover. I'm very excited to share it with you. Of course, I hope that you are a member of the Old World Design Society. Uh, wait a minute, I promised you that if you stuck around till the end, I would share something really exciting with you. So many of you have inquired about life in Door County. Many of you have inquired about vacationing in Door County. I am thrilled to share with you that we are launching our very first Airbnb so that you and your party of up to six can come and stay in the beautiful Door County countryside. The cottage that we are preparing for you is designed in an English country style and it is going to blow your mind and meet all of your expectations. So visit my new website, parisianfarmgirl.com for sure and leave your email address when I invite you to become a member of my mailing list. As a thank you, I'm going to give you a printable of all the paint colors that we've used in this house. And that way, 
when we launch this cottage at the beginning of spring, I can email you and let you know and you can plan your beautiful Door County vacation. Okay, so now here's what you need to do. Of course, make sure you're a member of the Old World Design Society. The Old World Design Society. Here is our winter magazine. It's absolutely gorgeous with articles and inspiration from around the world. You can do that by clicking this white circle right here. Make sure that you are subscribed to this channel. Watch a few more videos and I will see you again very soon. A bientôt.